What is up my fellow Andronauts? Let's talk about General Geraniol, which is called a GG. So let's just stick to GG because that's gonna be a much easier way to pronounce this. So GG is sometimes used in testosterone boosters and it can help to increase your testosterone. And I wanna show you the science to how it works and how effective it really is to humans because there are some human studies which shows us some interesting evidence. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what GG does and where it comes from. So GG is found in the annatto plant, not to be confused with natto, the fermented soybean. GG is also the pheromone for bumblebees and a variety of other insects. And GG acts as an essential building block for vitamin E, vitamin K2, and coenzyme Q10. Therefore, it's helpful to prevent the side effects of statins, since statins inhibit the synthesis of vitamin K2 and coenzyme Q10, amongst other things, causing a bunch of side effects. So here are a few benefits. GG has been shown to be antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumorogenic, neuroprotective, it lowers inflammation, improves liver function, it prevents muscle loss, and it prevents muscle function loss due to statins. In terms of testosterone, in 2011, researchers discovered that vitamin K2 MK4 can increase testosterone in a dose-dependent manner. So if you look at MK4, and here you can see GG. And this tail is identical to the tail on vitamin K2. And so they thought that maybe if they just use this tail, which is GG, maybe it will have the same effect as vitamin K2, MK4. So they tested both the GG and MK4, and they found that both increased testosterone in a dose-dependent manner. Here you can see they used the GG. The higher dose they used, the more testosterone increased. And here you can see it as well. Higher dose, bigger increase in testosterone. This was MK4, bigger dose, increase in testosterone. But this was in vitro, in cell culture. So they studied it in vivo in animals. And again, in animals, GG was able to double testosterone in these animals. Sorry for the blurry graph. And here you can see that MK4 was also effective at increasing testosterone, also about like a doubling in testosterone. So it seems that MK4 and GG is about equally effective at increasing testosterone. And here was the mechanism of action. So when you feed these animals, these rats, GG, it stimulates this adenyl cyclase enzyme, which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. And then cyclic AMP stimulates this CREB enzyme. And CREB stimulates STAR and YTP11A. So STAR is the enzyme that transports cholesterol into the mitochondria, where it's then converted into pregnenolone. So this is the first step of stereogenesis. And then pregnenolone is transported out the mitochondria to the endoplasmic reticulum, where it's converted all the way into testosterone. So GG stimulates this initial process, which is the right limited enzyme in testosterone synthesis. So this is why you can see that LH is not going up, but testosterone is going up because it's stimulating this initial step in sterogenesis. You don't need LH for this. Obviously, you do need LH to stimulate this process to be there, but it just enhances the effectiveness of LH to increase testosterone levels. In terms of dosing, they used 48.3 milligrams per kilogram, which translates to about 7.83 milligrams per kilogram for a human. That means a 100 kilogram guy, such as yours truly, will have to take about 800 milligrams to replicate the study. This is obviously the animal study. The vitamin K MK4 dose was about 75 milligrams, which is about 10x the GG dose. So it, they're not equally effective, interestingly. And so I think it's because of the absorption issue. They're absorbed differently and they accumulate differently in the testicular tissue. But MK4 is definitely very effective at increasing testosterone as well. So here is the human study. GG on testosterone and DHT in humans for the first four weeks, they used 150 milligrams, and then for the next four weeks, they used 300 milligrams. Total testosterone didn't increase, free testosterone didn't increase, and DHT didn't increase. Massively disappointing, but as I mentioned here, the, for me to replicate the study, I need to use about 800 milligrams. They used at max only 300 milligrams. So it's possible the reason why they didn't see increase in testosterone was because the dose was too small. But the researchers went one step further. They did a more in-depth analysis. So they looked at people with high and low testosterone. So when they looked at men with lower testosterone, lower than 700, GG increased total free and bioavailable testosterone by 7.5%, 15%, and 14.8% respectively. So when these guys had less than 700, GG was effective at slightly increasing total and free and bioavailable testosterone. But if the guys had over 700, it wasn't really effective. 
But again, the dose was only 300 milligrams per day instead of closer to 800 milligrams per day. So there is a big possibility that GG can increase testosterone similar to MK4, but the dose likely needs to be higher. If someone has low testosterone, like under 700, GG can increase it if the dose that you're using is about 300 milligrams. If you're going to be using closer to one gram of GG, perhaps if you already have high testosterone, it can take you even more. What you can also do is you can combine GG with MK4 and see if that is effective at increasing your testosterone as well. So the whole point here is that GG is effective, it can be effective, but the doses that you find in supplements, in testosterone boosters, is likely closer to 100 to 200 milligrams, which is not really going to be that effective. You really need higher doses of it to really work effectively. All right, guys, I hope you learned something new, and I will check you in the next one. Cheers, guys.